Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I would like to thank the President and the Board of the Association for the opportunity to speak about the Union of European Medical Specialists and its section of surgery. Oh. Ah. 93 years ago, in 1919, my grandfather returned to his and later on my hometown, Ypres, and found it totally devastated after it had been heroically defended by the British Army during four years. 72 years, 72 years elapsed yesterday, the 10th of May, since as war broke out, my schoolmates and I were sent home from school and went under the British Memorial, the Menning Gate, watching the first Allied French troops entering Belgium that was invaded by Germany. 70 years ago, in 1942, my family discovered that collaborating individuals had painted in tar on the facade of our house, here English disease. In fact, English disease is used to designate rickets in Flemish. These anecdotal war reminiscences, just to uh, explain our long-standing ties with the UK. At present, fortunately, history refashioned the old continent into the European Union and the European nations are confronted with more peaceful problems, also in the field of specialized medicine. Indeed, more and more regulations, prescriptions, requirements are issued by the European authorities, and healthcare problems of different dimensions arise, like mobility of doctors and specialists, cross-border medicine, European exams, working time, and so on. Hence, the absolute necessity to dispose of a common European organization in as close as possible a contact with the European authorities to express, to advocate the views, to defend the interests of the primarily involved European medical specialists. A few words about the history of the UEMS. The European Union of Medical Specialists was founded in 58 with the aim of representing the interests of specialist doctors at a European and international level. The UEMS is a non-governmental voluntary organization comprising the national medical organizations that represent, uh, that represent medical specialists in the European Union and in associated countries. Further features of its history involve the creation of the monospecialist sections in 1962, the doctor's directives 75, 362, and 363 with the mutual recognitions of diplomas, certainly influenced by the views of the UEMS the creation of the Advisory Committee on Medical Training, the president of which was at the same time president of the UEMS at that time, Dr. Pouillot of France, and the commission of senior officers of public health. In the 90s, the sections were each complemented with a working group for specialist training called the board. Several important charters were drafted by its Secretary General, Dr. K. Sleibrand from, uh, from Holland, and the UEMS expanded progressively towards the Eastern European countries. The 21st century saw the development of the European Accreditation Council for CME, the European Council for Accreditation of Medical Specialist Qualifications, and SESMA, the Council of the European Medical Assessments, with a current membership of 35 countries 
and 39 specialist sections and boards, the UEMS is the largest European medical organization. It provides for the representation of approximately 1.4 million medical specialists working in Europe, the annual income budget being of 1.3 million euros. How is the UEMS structured? <clears throat> I would ask you to concentrate on the white squares. According to its statutes, the core body of the UEMS is its council, the management council, composed of full and associate members. Full member organizations are representative for member states of the European Union. Associate member organizations are coming from the European economic area or from other interested European countries. Each country has one or two representatives in the Council. The Council disposes of a board taking care of the financial matters. <clears throat> the day-to-day -day administration is the responsibility of the executive consisting of a president, a secretary general, a treasurer, and a liaison officer. Four vice presidents supplement the enlarged executive. At the elections, in the second but last meeting of the Council in Naples in October, new office holders were elected. The current president is Professor Krajewski, a Polish neurosurgeon. The secretary general is Dr. Edwin Bormann, a UK anesthesiologist, the treasurer Berkici from Italy, a maxillofacial surgeon and the liaison officer is the previous president, Professor Zlatko Fras, cardiologist of Slovenia. The four vice presidents are coming from Sweden, Italy, the Czech Republic, Germany, and also in the executive is the honorary president, Dr. Len Harvey, also from the UK. As essential, as the council are the sections, mono-specialist sections, one for each specialty, the backbone of the UEMS, composed of one or two delegates of the national member mono-specialist associations. The sections dispose of a board, a working group for matters with regard to the training. Not mentioned on this slide are the divisions which are the uh, subdivisions of the section and which represent the subspecialties. Uh, for example, the division of transplant surgery, the division of coloproctology, etc. Other constitutional bodies are the standing committees on CME, is one of them, and its European Accreditation Council for CME. Then a standing committee on postgraduate training with its European Council for Accreditation of Medical Specialist Qualifications. And SESMA, which I already mentioned, the Council of European Specialist Medical Assessments. And finally, the standing committee on quality of specialist practice encompassing the European Advisory Council for quality management of specialist medical practice. What are the objectives and the key activities of the UEMS? Summarizing, one can say that it, the, its first role is to grant a unified voice to the European specialists. Secondly, of course, political lobbying with the European authorities. Thirdly, striving for excellence in the key areas of the medical profession, for example, training. Promoting interaction and support between the national medical associations and the UEMS and between the individual specialties and the UEMS. Addressing interdisciplinary issues in emerging areas of specialist medical practice example, emergency medicine, setting the basis for robust accreditation of educational activities, 
by correct registration and accreditation. The development of models of training of medical specialists and high standards of clinical practice, and in a nutshell, the defense of professional interests of European medical specialists. One of the more recent achievements of the UEMS is the acquisition of a property, a house, meant to become the home of the medical profession in Europe, a domus medica europea, in the heart of the European area in Brussels. It concerns a large five-floor mansion that will be equipped to host, besides the UEMS headquarters itself, other European medical associations and to provide offices and meeting rooms for use by the divisions of the UEMS, for example, by the sections. A word about this SESMA, the European Council for Accreditation of Medical Specialist Qualifications. <clears throat> it realized a pilot project related to the potential introduction of an e-platform supporting a system of assessment of medical professional competence by which the knowledge assessment of trainees is organized via internet. This project has, as an initial phase, been tested in three specialties, intensive care, anesthesiology, and cardiology. The project proves to be successful and is scheduled to be applied in other specialties. It's a common enterprise from the UEMS and from a private company, Orzone Swedish. The Council of European Special, uh, Specialist Medical Assessment, SESMA, on, continues to evaluate, to control, and to support the <clears throat> continuously expanding European examinations. Currently, 30 or more UEMS sections organize European examinations, and more and more European countries adopt the examinations as their official final assessment of the training. Let us concentrate a while on the UEMS section of surgery. As already mentioned, the specialty sections are the backbone of the UEMS. A word of history concerning the section of surgery. The constituent, constituent meeting of the section, at that time called mono-specialist section of surgery, took place in Brussels in 63, at the invitation of Belgian surgeons. Professor Nubour of the Netherlands was appointed president by delegates of six founding countries, Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. Since then, many British personalities, surgical personalities, held positions in the executive of the section, among which the names that you see here, uh, Mr. Alan Dean, Edinburgh, Professor Greenouch, Professor Peter Harris, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Mr. Adrian Marston, John Nichols from uh, London, et cetera. A considerable number of meetings were organized, took place in the United Kingdom, London, Edinburgh, Bath. At the recent spring meeting of the section in Malta in last March, a new executive was elected. President Professor Vasilios Papalois, who will speak to you in a moment, UK, Vice President Dr. Joseph Wirtz from Belgium, uh, Secretary General Glomsaker Tom from Norway, Raffaele Rosso from Switzerland is the treasurer, and Professor Antosh Francis from the Czech Republic continues his term of office as president of the board for two more years, whereas I myself am still a member, an honorary member then of the executive. There is a lot more to say about the UEMS, more particularly about the British contributions. 
Indeed, the United Kingdom has been responsible for an ever-growing activity in the UEMS. If in the early decades of its existence, the influence of France, and to a certain extent from continental Europe, was considerable, it is obvious that from the 90s on, the activity of the UEMS has been substantially directed by its British components. One of the indicative features is the practically exclusive use of the English language in the meetings. I listed the names of the British delegates in the Management Council, the majority of whom I have known personally. Another indication of this growing British influence is the impressive bibliographic list of position papers and declarations of the UEMS over the last six years, practically all from the pen of the past Vice President and the current Secretary General, Dr. Edwin Borman. He has been a very dynamic and undoubtedly diligent element in the executive of the UEMS. Mr. President, dear colleagues, the humble speaker at the end of his presentation says, for example, or gives this quote, since light travels faster than sound, people appear bright until you hear them speak. I hope now that I have been able to discern, that you have been able to discern me down to the end of my speech, and I thank you for your attention.